It's girly power. It's the coach. This is the 2019 season on EA Sports. Coming up, running back Todd Gurley. Fresh off a standout performance a week ago, as it'll be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Los Angeles Rams. I'll have scores around the league for you at the half, but it's time for a little football. So we'll hand it over to our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. From the second largest city in the U.S., Los Angeles, California, we've got football as EA Sports coverage of the NFL is on the air. The City of Angels showing it can be loud and raucous. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad emerged from the tunnel. They're ready for football and ready to watch their Rams do battle with Jameis Winston and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you look at this Rams team as they interplay. They've got to be pleased with the start to this season. Obviously, a perfect 3-0. Three good quality wins, too. It's got people in the locker room excited. They're thinking that this could be their year. On the other side of the field for the visiting Bucks, they were losers their last time out. They're going to try to get back in the win column, but obviously they're going to have to do that in a hostile environment. And sometimes it actually works to your advantage. Now you've got to band together your team, the us against the world mentality. Let's see if they can use it and get a victory. It's 3-0 versus 2-1, and one, a good early season battle as we're underway in week four. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Buccaneers heading out. It's the fifth-year man, Jameis Winston, in charge. A big key for Jameis this year, just finding a way to avoid those turnovers. They've been his undoing during his tenure in Tampa. It's no secret. 14 interceptions again last year, plus seven fumbles in just nine games played. Now a carry by the third-year man. This is Austin Eckler. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. That's good for a Buccaneer first, a pickup of 12 yards. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. I can't believe they even let you play. Working out of the gun, Winston. That's caught by Howard. A big pickup there, 18 yards and a Buccaneer first. And with the Buccaneers' new coaching staff, you have to figure they're going to want to use O.J. Howard a little bit more this season. 34 catches, 565 yards last year, but that was in only 10 games. 6'6", 251, and can run. Find a way to get him the ball as they just did there. Second down, Eckler. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Four yards on the pickup there, and now they're left with a third and eight. And we get a glance now at the Buccaneer offense. Mike Evans is exactly what you're looking for in a receiver in today's NFL. Big, quick, can flat-out run, but makes great adjustments when the ball is in the air. Right, number three last year in receiving yards, 1,000 yards receiving every year he's been in the league. First down, Tampa Bay there, a gain of 13. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive. And they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down. They did. Big time pickup. For and nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Austin Eckler, his first touchdown on the year. And they are able to strike first here on their opening drive. A nice run by him, don't get me wrong, but the blocking up front was a thing of beauty. I think for an opening drive, how about that for an exclamation point? Just what you said, good blocking, good vision, and he accelerated to the end zone. Extra point by Gay is up and good, and it's now a 7-0 game. This fielded at the 2. 
And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. So here are the Rams now under their 33-year-old head coach, Sean McVay. They're led onto the field by the former Cal Bear and the number one overall pick in 2016, Jared Goff. He threw for nearly 350 yards. His team won. And one word just kept coming to mind as I watched him during the game, surgical. Absolutely surgical. That's why he won NFC Offensive Player of the Week. Yeah, very precise. The throws may be as accurate as he's been in some time. Yeah, I think he feels pretty locked in here, and I think he feels like he can get it done again in this one, too. They go play action with Gurley. Now Goff gets this into the hands of the tight end, Higby. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a gain of 11 and a first down L.A. Now Goff on first down. He'll get this one to cut complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. A good pickup, 17 yards and also a Rams first down. Now the first carry here for Todd Gurley. And some nifty running right away as he'll get this up past the 30. It's a gain of 11 and a first down L.A. That opening drive rhythm continues right into play number three. Whatever they decided that they wanted to run before the game, it's working pretty well for them right now. And he's going to go down to him back at the 40. And Dominican Sue with a sack. We've seen that a ton since he entered the league in 2010. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. That's for a right sideline here is complete. They get 14 back, but it leads now to a third down. Goff on third down. He'll throw underneath for Gurley. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. An effective seven-yard third down conversion. They'll run for the first time here with Brown. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. On second down now. It's Brown, and this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. The headshots here are the offensive unit, and what about Brandon Cooks? If he's not a 1,000-yard receiver every year he's healthy in the league, I'll be surprised. Came out of college wanting to be a pro, studied all the best receivers in the NFL before he even got to the league. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Todd Gurley, his third touchdown now on the year as his guys are on the board here in this first quarter. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how we're going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. So we're back to a one-point game now as the kickoff comes. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. They'll run here with Eckler, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. On third down, Winston. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. 
Picked off by the Pro Bowler, Marcus Peters. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 18. Here's Golf. And that'll be caught by Cobb. And they do finally get him, but he takes it to the 25. A big play there on the catch and run. 57 yards. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. First and 10 at the 25 yard line. After one, a one point game, 7 to 6. Second quarter now from Los Angeles. It is the Rams in possession as they've got it with a first and 10. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Going to run the sweep here. This is Cobb. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. So many play callers in the red zone worry about the negative effects of a play that they're about to call. But this guy, all he's worried about is gaining yardage and putting the ball in the hands of his playmakers. There's gone. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. Brandon Cooks, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Rams have taken the lead. And no matter how it comes about, when you get good field position, you have to make the defense pay. Short fields usually make for good offense. And he'll get into the end zone as the two-point conversion is successful. And I guess that makes up for the earlier missed two-point try here to get him to 14. Yeah, that aggressiveness it reminds me a lot of when basketball first adopted the three-point shot. People are starting to realize that three for two is really starting to work for them. In this case now, maybe the two for one is coming into play in the NFL. Winston and the Bucks take over now first and ten at their own 25-yard line. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Jameis to throw it. And this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. It is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put it up on the top shelf where the kids can't get it. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 43. A running play on first down, and it turns into a fight just to get back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. On play action, Winston. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. Touchdown, Tampa Bay! Chris Godwin. His second touchdown on the season as they are an extra point away now from tying this football game. And there they got him the ball. Just get it to him. Let him do the rest. You know, he probably said that to his quarterback as he broke the huddle. I like the play call. Just get it to me. I'll take care of the rest of it. Helping out his rack, right? RAC. Run after catch. And he loves that. And he's going to carry that in at contract time. This is fielded at the goal line. Now a hit and a loose football. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And he returns it to the end zone. A fumble recovery touchdown for the Bucs. The previous play is under review. So problems here on special teams, and it results in the scoop and the score. They talk all the time on special teams about keeping your head on a swivel, trying to see the whole field. Hard to do when things are going that fast. Bodies all over the place. You're just trying to find the right guy to align yourself with. On that play, wow. Darius Stewart. Oh, 
The Los Angeles offense set to begin their next drive. And Charles, the way touchdowns have come so fast and furious for both sides in this thing, it's starting to feel a little bit more like maybe a tennis match in a football game. Yeah, I like your description there. Maybe we're sitting in a nice royal box watching this type of a game. But let's face it, right now, the way it's going back and forth, it's going to come down to who can get a stop. Goff going to hand it to Gurley. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. Kind of surprised they Still accept the penalty. The only thing that comes to mind for me is they want to move him back five yards because they feel good about their defense. But in most situations, you take the down. <laughs> that, that, that's what counts more. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. Well, that play looks familiar because we saw them working on it in practice this week. And for a lineman trying to block on this play, they love when they get the defense moving in one direction. And when they try and change directions, it's a lot easier to pick them up and ward them off. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up. Keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. And he's got this down to the 35. First down, Los Angeles there with a pickup of 14 yards. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Gurley again here on first down. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down L.A. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. And we remind you, coming up at the half, we'll join who, Charles? The coach. <laughs> the coach, Jonathan Coachman, standing by in Orlando. He'll have stats and scores from games in progress, as well as scores from earlier today. The Sorry. coach. Sorry, we get slap happy up here sometimes. On second and nine, Goff. And they'll set up the screen to Gurley. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Todd Gurley with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year, as his guys are able to regain the lead. So the call is made by Sean McVay. They're going to go for two. Getting your back involved, what's the importance there in the passing game? Well, oftentimes you can create mismatches because who's going to cover? And you get him into space, which is where he likes to operate with the ball in his hands. Oftentimes makes people miss, gets that run after the catch, and off he goes. And into the end zone. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people have to run, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. Here's Winston. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. 17 yards on the play at a Buccaneer first down. Draw play, it's Eckler. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. Now the Bucs going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Out of the gun, Eckler running it. The Bucs going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. 
To throw, Winston. And down he goes on the pressure from the Rams defense. The Rams are going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. Only two punts for him last week in the loss as he gets this one away. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. Goff on first down. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. And it appears we've got a member of the Rams shaken up on that last play. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. And that's complete to Cooks. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Goff now closing in on a 200-yard first half through the air. It's first and 10. From the gun, here's Goff. Eluding the pressure right. Now he'll let it go deep right side. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Again, Goff. Open man right side is cup complete. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. Right hash mark of 42-yard attempt. And that is not going to get there. Oh, he missed it short. It's no good. So we come upon halftime here in Southern California with the Rams on top. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. All right, Brandon, we'll get back to you guys in a bit. But first, time for a trip around the league on this final weekend of September. We'll start in the NFC West. Two teams that played to a 6-6 tie a few years back. Arizona hosting Seattle. And that one at the half. 20 to 7 is the score. Tyler Lockett, a touchdown catch in that first half. From there, we'll take a trip east to check on the Bears at home at Soldier Field. And they have the lead in that one over the visiting Minnesota Vikings. Two touchdown passes there for Mitchell Trubisky. Lastly, we're off to the Rocky Mountains, Denver, Colorado. See what's happening with the Broncos. And they've got the lead in that ball game over the visiting Jaguars. Joe Flacco has a touchdown pass there. In the game you're watching, it was Jared Goff with a strong first half. He's thrown for over 200 yards already, and his guys have the lead as well. As we get you back to Brandon God. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. The Los Angeles offense set to begin their next drive. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you turn that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their play ball. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies, try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. The first down run with Gurley, good for only about three. It's second down now. Levante David in on the tackle. Now on second down, this is Gurley. He's got a first down and more inside the 30. And finally taken down at the four-yard line. A big hitter. That one goes for 40 yards. 
He showed his shiftiness and his explosion to take him all the way down near the goal line. Love that description, and it creates momentum. Maybe you hand it to him again since he's got it going, or do you fake it to him and throw it to a teammate? Right now, the options are wide open. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Running right, here's Brown. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. Well, they've been so good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? A shotgun snap for goal. And he's going to go down. Sacked back at the 13-yard line. One thing they definitely like about this youngster is his motor. He is full throttle on each and every snap. Loves to get after the quarterback, and that has to feel good to him right there. His first career sack. So he missed that field goal earlier, but he says not this time. Able to knock it through, give his guys three. I like his poise. I like his confidence, his belief in himself. Sometimes when you miss that first one, you see a lot of guys sag, and they can't make the next one. Not in this case. Stepped right up like a pro. A reminder coming up tonight, a tough ticket in New Orleans. The Cowboys in town to take on the Saints on Sunday night football. And tomorrow night, Charles and I, we go to Pittsburgh. Bengals and Steelers, two teams, well, they don't like each other very much. That's well documented. That starts at 8.15 Eastern as we close out the month of September. Give them nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Once more, here's Eckler. Two yards, good enough for a first. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and we'll still get the first down. They love being physical. Here is Eckler. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. First down, Tampa Bay there, a gain of 13. Running on first down, Eckler. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage will be found. They'll try to throw now, Winston. Left side here, that's complete to Godwin. The reception good for seven. It's third down. That's what I'm talking about. Not in so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Akeem Tlaib. When we talk about a keep to leave, technique is not the word that comes to mind, but don't worry about that. This guy anticipates as well as anyone in the league, and he did just that, picking off another pass. Curley with a carry on first down. He'll only get a couple, second and eight forthcoming. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. Back-to-back -back runs, I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. Goff now looks to throw, and he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, w what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed, if there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. He's had a good performance, moved the ball effectively on the ground. Of course, he has the one touchdown. And when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described, that leads to finding a way into the end zone. And now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And of course, with that comes additional yardage. Yeah, looking for additional yardage. And again, that second score here in the third quarter. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. This is a counter play, Eckler. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. 
to throw on second and six. Winston, he finds his tight end, Howard. That's complete. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Rams' 41-yard line. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 41. Off the play fake, Winston. That's caught by Howard. 20! And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. O.J. Howard, his second touchdown on the season as his guys are back within a single score. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to each and every time. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked up by Nikel Roby Coleman. Well, as most teams do in their two-point attempt, they pass the ball. Instead, it gets intercepted. And remember, if you pick it off, you got a chance to take it all the way back and get two points yourself, right? Yeah, not the case here. But that's why you've got to be really careful with those throws, especially to the outside. Get ready! Get ready! The Los Angeles offense set to begin their next drive. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. Jared Goff with his third touchdown pass of the afternoon. And the Rams tack on to their advantage. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. And they're able to get the connection on the long touchdown pass, and that's one of the easiest drive summaries you'll ever see. One play, touchdown. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. They started on the ground with Eckler. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Now Winston. Over the middle, he finds Godwin complete. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Winston now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. To throw is Winston. And he finds Howard complete. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. They only got a yard out of that last completion. And that makes this second and nine. Winston. Open man is Howard, the tight end. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. The last completion actually lost a yard, so now they'll need to convert on third down. Jameis again. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Howard. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. The Bucs go for it. It's Winston. And no, it's incomplete. Bruce Arians takes a shot there, but his guys come up empty. And the Rams get the football in outstanding field position. So Jared Goff, he is the focus of our player spotlight. He's had one of those games that any quarterback loves, not only being able to complete some passes, but some deep passes. And it's pretty to watch. I mean, it's an absolute joy to see, but let's face it, we got to give a little bit of credit where it's deserved. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No 
Throwing on third. Goal. He'll get this one to Cup complete. And he's going to be brought down short of the first at about the 31-yard line. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. So they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. Winston and the Bucks take over now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They go over the middle, and it's complete to start the drive. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. And a throw right sideline here is complete. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Winston. Hits his target, the tight end, Will Ty. 10 yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. Winston now. He's got his tight end over the middle, O.J. Howard. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Rams 39. Winston in the offense with a first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. To the air again with Winston. He finds his target. It's Evans. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. On the ground, it's Eckler. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. The open man is Smith. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. Here's Winston. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. Looking to throw again on second down. Winston. He got the big lead. And that's going to be intercepted. Taken by the pro bowler, Eric Weddle. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. If you combine last week and this week, he's got a hat trick going because he had two interceptions a week ago. He's seeing the ball so well and understanding where receivers are and positioning. I mean, just watching him work with such great technique and paying it off by actually catching the ball when he has a chance, he's helping his team in a huge way. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and 10. Let's go, defense. Let's get out the field, defense. Again, they run with Gurley. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. The Bucs going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as he'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. The Rams on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This will be third and five. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. The Bucs forced to use their third and final timeout as they stop it here with just under 40 seconds to go in the game. So on the heels of the run by Todd Gurley, another first and 10. And the clock will roll down to zeros. Four weeks in, 4-0. and oh. I don't think anybody needs to alert the 72 Dolphins just yet, but great start to the season. Great start. How about taking a knee at the end, and there's no better feeling for a team than to do that, to close out a victory. But you're right, at 4-0, oh, they're sending a message to the rest of the league. They're going to be tough to deal with. Goff with a kneel down here, and that should put a conclusion to this one. So the L.A. Rams with a victory here, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, 
that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big time performance down the stretch. So for Los Angeles, hey, they finish a perfect month of September as they move to 4-0 on the new campaign. And they will hit the road 